Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of 3 and you here for another Legacy video. Uh, today's video is sponsored in part by Thomas R, who wanted to see some mono, mono green cloud post in action. Um, so most Legacy players are probably familiar with the general cloud post archetype. Cloud post is a really sweet land that adds an extra one for each locus on the battlefield. So you play your cloud posts, and you play your glimmer posts, and then you go and copy them with things like Vesuva or Thespian Stage to make even more posts. So the ultimate goal is to cast some big, dumb, inevitable creature that is just going to annihilate your opponent's permanents. But the green stuff that's in the deck along the way, like Elvish Reclaimer and Crop Rotation and Once Upon a Time, all these cards are here so that you can kind of smooth out your land drops and make it so that like you can select for some of these silver bullet lands, Cavern of Souls to make your creatures uncounterable, Bojuka Bog to steal some games versus graveyard decks, Tabernacle to just be a nuisance towards uh, go-wide strategies like maybe uh, elves and death and taxes. And we have a couple of green sun bullets along the way. Uh, we have a fan favorite Endurance, which is just like a large creature and also graveyard hate. Uh, we have Reclamation Sage and Ramunap Excavator to get lands back from the graveyard. If you're not super familiar with this archetype, the Pithing Needles in the main deck might look a little weird, but you're so vulnerable to Wasteland that like you just want to shut that down if you can. So the game one Pithing Needles basically always just name Wasteland if you're on the play and you don't know what your opponent is playing. As far as the sideboard goes, like this deck has just picked what it wants to beat. There are four Mind Break Traps for your Degenerate stuff. There's four Force of Vigors for maybe your Urza Saga type matchups. You have three Endurances for things like Delver or your Graveyard decks. And then you have four Carpet of Flowers for your blue decks, especially blue decks that might also be packing Wasteland. Um, I bumped this list up in the queue a little bit because I wanted to play this before I do a brew around Paradox Zone that I've been conditioned to do, commissioned to do, rather. Um, and I'm considering using a green cloud post shell as the base for that, uh, so I just kind of want to see how this feels in action. I have had mixed results and mixed feelings about green cloud post in the past because you're not actually running that many green sources at the end of the day. You had a lot of colorless lands, and so sometimes you just can't cast those green cards consistently and on curve. And I am always about good mana, um, so I'm going to see how I feel about this current iteration and decide whether or not I want to like do another cloud post deck or whether I want to reevaluate and try something else. Anyway, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you're a regular, you know, throw me a like or a comment. Those sorts of things that mean a lot, uh, especially throw me a comment if you have any uh, thoughts on the deck building here. Uh, sideboard looks real clean. I don't know if we're just like missing any key effects or anything, um, but I, I like how the deck list looks at a glance. Uh, let's just go ahead and hop right into things. Let's battle. Okay, my opponent has revealed Yorian, which probably means death on taxes. I would love to start on a pithing needle. Uh, Glacial Chasm is basically a dead card. The Once Upon a Time is whatever here. Um, I, I think I'm going to pitch this hand. I don't think this is going to be consistent enough. Yeah, this is this is a much better hand. Uh, it has a couple of basics to start things off. Um, do I play Pithing Needle or Reclaimer on one? Flash, what do I not want? I don't think I'm ready for the Primeval Titan anytime soon. I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go Land Reclaimer on one. There's a world where this gets like Swords to Plowshared and that eats up my opponent's turn. I'll play Pithing Needle on two, hold up crop rotation afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is so much better than me for than my or me than my opponent just like flopping down a vial. Alright. So I'll Pithing Needle. Name Wasteland. I think I'll just play out a map. I don't think I need to go ham on crop rotation quite yet. There's a lot of worlds where I want to like save this crop rotation and use it to grab something like a tabernacle and take out a bunch of my opponent's creatures, but there's also worlds where I just need to turn this into mana. Okay, um, that's threatening. I assume this gets Cauldra. Does. Do I have a Maze of Ith? Uh, Amrakul is not the draw that I'm looking for. Okay, same question though. Uh, no Maze of Ith. I have Tabernacle... 
do have the Dark Depths combo. Is that how I'm winning this one now? That might be how I'm winning this one. I'm under a lot of pressure all of a sudden from this Cauldra in a way that I didn't expect to be. All right. Grab the Thespian stage now. That actually produces mana. Grab the Thespian stage, play another map out. Um, there are some worlds where my stuff just gets like Skyclaved or Flicker Wisped or whatever. Okay. Uh, it is It is just on the hurt time from Cauldra. So this puts me to 16. Okay. Ooh. This means that I can't just go turbo. I needed to draw land in order to combo off this turn. All right. Just thinking about Yavamaya real quick to make sure I didn't have uh, a Yavamaya based line that just murders my opponent immediately. I am still holding up crop rotation. So kind of the next big thing here is does my opponent have Pithing Needle in their main deck? If they have Pithing Needle, um, I have to abandon this crop, uh, this Dark Depths plan, unfortunately. Okay. Do you have it? Okay, they do not. Fantastic. Okay, Cathar Commando is fine. Now it's less fine. Cathar Commando blows up Pithing Needle and then they have Wasteland for my combo. Not great for me, and I don't have a redundant Dark Depths. I'm on a single copy of each one, or uh, I'm on a single copy of Dark Depths more relevantly. Um, yeah. Okay. There's a life. I guess I'm just passing the turn here, holding up crop rotation. Uh, this is bad for me because, like, my opponent doesn't have to move first here. Yeah. Uh, so like, I'm going to lose so much in this turn cycle. Okay, I'm getting attacked for 8. Yes, I need to try to save this damage. So I'm going to attempt to do this. My opponent is going to activate this here. Alright. So I'll keep the copy with no counters. And my opponent's going to wasteland this. Yep. Then I crop rotation this away. I'll pick up a Cloud Post and kind of hope that I can play a Primeval Titan and do something with it. Um, like, Primeval Titan is not exactly great versus uh, Cauldra, though. There's two, three, four, five. I can crop rotation and get more colorless mana. Um, I guess I have to crop rotation for Glacial Chasm to stay alive. Um, it's super bad for me, though. Because I either have to, like, lose out on some colorless mana and get rid of a cloud post, or I lose out on a colored source and I'm further away from casting Primeval Titan. Not sure which route I really need to be going here, and I'm also just going to be dead to a Flicker Wisp removing that land. I think I'm going to get rid of my second... No, I'm going to get I'm going to get rid of a Glimmer Post. I think it's more realistic to get to Primeval Titan. Well, I guess I'm losing two lands, huh? I have to then sacrifice another land when this comes into play. So I guess I'm splitting the difference and getting rid of this second green as well. Oh, this is super feel bad. Right. I don't get to keep this for very long. I am going to die so quickly. Like, yeah. So this gets me a Reclaimer. I don't think I have like a Dryad Arbor. Yep. Okay. So then I can rotate. Yeah, I'm I'm just in the abyss. I can't I can't get out of this. So I rotate away glacial chasm, and then I am going to end up dying after that because I'm not going to have any outs. I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and concede this one. I'm I'm not getting out of this. I don't have like a, if I had a little more mana, like I could potentially could have gotten Ramunap and like prolonged the game that way. All right, um, Endurances and Force of Vigors are things that I can think about here. Um, most of my cards that are in the main deck are pretty reasonable. Kind of my issue with this game was that my opponent got under me with a Cauldra. Um, normally, like, the Cloud Post deck will go over the soft mana denial of Death and Taxes pretty easily as the game goes along, but Cauldra specifically changes that dynamic and is just a little bit too much pressure. I don't really know how to sideboard here. Because just, like, having some shit like Endurance and Elvish Reclaimer in play with a decent-sized butt is pretty reasonable. 
I think I'm going to junk the Once Upon a Times for like some Endurances or Force of Vigors. You want to go with Endurances? Well, I guess I can have a Force of Vigor as well. I could also like not play Bojukabog and play this. I'm trying to just like not take damage to the little shitters in the early game with Elvish Reclaimer and Endurance. And if I drag things on and get to this stuff, like those will win games. Um, is this acceptable? I have no, I have no play until turn three. I, th I think this hand gets eaten alive by something like a Cauldra, a Mulligan. Uh, this hand is quite good. I'll throw back a Pithing Needle here. And I think I will go ahead and just lead Forest Pithing Needle. Like... Starting on Cloud Post makes this hand curve out so much better, but I think I just don't get to do that realistically. Because if that Cloud Post gets wastelanded, the rest of my hand becomes just so, so, so much worse. Alright, cool. Now I can play Cloud Post, Expedition Map. Next turn I can Vesuva, Cloud Post, um, Expedition Map up, Yavamaya. Yeah, um... Ugh, so much pressure. So much pressure. All right. Uh, okay. Let's well, Vesuva, copy Cloud Post. So already next turn, assuming this is two, four, five, second green is six. Okay, I think I'm going to be able to go, go through this just fine. Grab Yavamaya. Playing around an Aven Mind Sensor, which is not commonly played, but it's pretty free for me to do this because I'm I'm quite certain that I want this card. All right, so here comes the Cauldra. I'll take my five damage. Um, so notably, this thing is indestructible. So um, Force of Vigor not exactly going to do what I want it to do there. All right, I'm doing Primeval Titan stuff. Yes, I will use this ability. Um, I have my eye in hand. I think I will just grab double cloud post. All my stuff taps for green already. Okay, yeah, I mean, that that's fine. I will gladly take that six life. I have 16, 17, 18 mana next turn. Um, is seven to activate this and then another 11. Okay, sure, that's fine. All right. Um, do I have Olamog? I do. Olamog costs 10. Fantastic. And this Exiles confirming. Exiles. All right. I will tap two lands and activate my Eye of Ugin. Grab Olamog. Add a billion mana to my mana pool. I'll exile Cauldra, and honestly, just a Plains at that point. Possible Aether Vial's better. Yeah, your, your Cathar Commando is fine. Okay. Then I'll play an Elvish Reclaimer. It's small right now, but that's fine. So the land from this enters tapped. I'm also just going to, like, play Emrakul next turn, I think. I, yeah. All right, good stuff. Um, I could play more Force of Vigor on the draw to be better versus Aether Vial. I think this is fine. Like, they're, they're, they're not going to have Stoneforge every game in their larger than normal size deck list. Um, how is this hand? Forest, crop rotation, four Cloud Post, play Cloud Post. Um, this is okay. It's not great, it's okay. I wish I had some stuff to kind of bridge me into the mid game, but uh, you know, it it is what it is. Okay, um, what do I want to crop rotation away? Like, do I want to keep two forests? I potentially just want to keep two basic forests for later. I'm gonna go ahead and just play Yavamaya right now. Okay, or is a saga? Okay, uh, apparently you can just have it every time. So if, if Cauldra gets backed up by Wasteland, I think I straight up end up losing this game. Um, but if it doesn't, maybe I can ramp things out pretty quickly. All right, there's a Cloud Post. All right, uh, Glacial Chasm is an okay draw, not amazing. I will Vesuva get another Cloud Post. I am two turns away from Primeval Titan. I just need the green mana. 
I have all the colorless mana that I need. Uh, once Primeval Titan happens, Emrakul happens the following turn quite easily. Eh. Alright. So I'm going to take one here. I'm going to get Rashad and Ported. Yep, I mean, this is fine, because I didn't really have anything to do with the mana this turn anyway. Um, do I play green mana this turn? I think I do. In the worlds where my opponent does not Rashad and Port me, this allows me to play Primeval Titan next turn. All right, I assume this is not making a construct. Yeah, okay. So they're going to use this to activate this, put in the Cauldra, and then maybe get like a Pithing Needle. I don't know, they could just get a Shadow Spear or something. Like there's there's options afforded to my opponent here. Okay, yeah. So they have the host sideboard Pithing Needle, not the game one Pithing Needle. Okay, so they've named Eye of Ugin, uh, which normally is pretty good. It's not exactly insane in this exact position because I already have two fatties in hand. Um, so this is fine with me. Okay, yeah, so my opponent is going after my colorless mana. So do I just play another Cloud Post? Like, will my opponent switch to tapping green next turn? That's kind of the question here. Probably. Well, they might not, because I'm getting close to Emrakul mana off just Cloud Posts. Yeah, I'll play another Cloud Post. So I'm going to take six here. And uh, if my opponent plays another creature, I could theoretically be dead next turn. So this is eight. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So they're just going to do both in my upkeep. That's fine. You're really supposed to spread those out over um, two phases, but say la vie. Okay. So this is three, four, five, six mana, but not in the appropriate colors. Um, I could die to something like Sword of Fire and Ice this turn. I don't think I want a Glacial Chasm. I think I want to play around Shadow Spear, because that's just like a plus one, plus one. I can play around that pretty easily. Let's play a Glimmer Post. Grab four life here. Play an Expedition Map. And then I'll wait on my search, I think. So if I get double Cloud Post ported here, I still think I'm okay. I go down to six. All right. So this is theoretical lethal on board. I'll do my search. So I'm going to get double cloud post ported. And then I will have four, five, six, seven mana. I can get double glimmer post from my deck. I think I put another glimmer post to hand. I could put the Dark Depths in hand and work towards copying that as my actual win condition. I'm hoping Emrakul just wins, though. I'm going to grab Glimmer Post. Seems like my opponent is thinking about whether or not they want to switch to tapping down some green mana. That's fine. Opponent having quite a difficult time with this decision. Does he get to play around one of, like, Primeval Titan or an Olamog here and not the other? Okay, they are going for the green. Okay. Um, I can just Glimmer Post gain 5 life here. That gets me through another turn. And then how much mana is this? So these will be 5, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, that's fine. So then I think end of my opponent's turn, I turn... God damn it. I think I turn a Cloud Post into a Forest. All right, so I'm back to 6. Or, sorry, five after um, the other set of combat damage is done. All right. Um, oh, 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 this is not a Thespian Sage. This was a Vesuva. Okay, JK. Yep. So we'll see whether or not they go after a Forest this time. They do. Okay. I mean, I can, I, I can just do the whole copy Glimmer Post again thing. Or I could start Glacial Chasm. I think I'm just going to repeat this for as long as this keeps working. Like, every every land drop that I make is just putting me closer towards just hardcasting an Emrakul even through triple Rashadon port. Uh, like, I'm, I'm good with this. And I'll Glacial Chasm as late in this as I can. Um, yeah, that's fine. Like, do your thing. I'll get triple Rashadon ported here again. 
Uh, honestly, I'm just like happy that Wasteland is not in my opponent's hand because Glacial Chasm is the thing that allows me to just kind of like sit here and do my own shit forever. Um, crop rotation is cool. I think it might just be Glacial Chasm time though. Although I can, I can gain five life. I can just crop rotation for another Glimmer Post and then have Green Green in play and have gained enough life to get through the next turn cycle as well. Yeah, I'm good with that. Just gonna go ahead and do this now. Grab that glimmer post. All right, so I think the next turn has to be my glacial chasm turn in all likelihood, but I might be able to do more than one thing on that turn. All right, do your thing, opponent. I assume it's both cloud posts and one forest that go down here. Yep, seems accurate. Oh, Ramunap Excavator is really cool. So I can just keep sandbagging, like Ramunap Excavator, Vesuva, a Glimmer Post. Try to get my opponent to use a Solitude so that one of my other creatures doesn't uh, eat it to that. Yeah, that sounds good. Although I guess this would randomly lose to like a Surgical Extraction. Copy Glimmer Post. This is such a dirtily game. All right, so my opponent is pausing on my end step here, which is, yep. Yeah. All right. So I've gotten them to use a Solitude, which means something like an Emrakul or a Primeval Titan is more likely to stick. Okay, there's a Caracas. That's fine. That's not actually, like, truly problematic right now in any way at all. All right, I'm down to five. All right, once again, we've reached my upkeep. Do your thing, opponent. The Cloud Post, and then I assume a Forest gets tapped down for the last one. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many Vesuvas are in my deck? There are two Vesuvas. One is in play, one is in my graveyard. So if I play this Primeval Titan, I have to chump block with it. I don't know that I like that. But if I play Glacial Chasm... Hmm. So if I play Primeval Titan, I lose to Path to Exile or Flicker Wisp. I play Glacial Chasm, I lose to Flicker Wisp or Wasteland. So I'm going to be on approximately the same number of things either way. I could play Glacial Chasm and Elvish Reclaimer. That probably ends up being my safest line because I can always chump block this for a turn. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right. Let's sacrifice a Glimmer Post there. Play Elvish Reclaimer. Okay, so no, no immediate spot removal spell from my opponent. Okay, that's just another land. Flicker Wisp. Oh, Recruiter of the Guard. Uh, this could get a little wild. I'm just kind of assuming that this needs to be a Flicker Wisp. It is a Solitude instead. Interesting. Okay, so they're pitch casting Solitude, getting that out of the way. It, like, I have Glacial Chasm, though. Like, that's what this card is for. That's no damage. That did not do what you wanted it to do. Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll pay my two life. A cloud post. Okay, so I think I just play that this turn. And then I should be able to primeval titan that next turn. Even through the ports. Uh, I'm just going to start F6ing my opponent's turns. I'm going to stop representing... Um, Crop rotation. What did my opponent pitch to cast the solitude, by the way? Thalia, sure. Okay. Yep, no attacks because it doesn't do any good. Uh huh. Yup. Do I have a Caracas in my deck? I do. That's very relevant for the next turn cycle or so. I can just try to take infinite turns via Emrakul. I don't know if my opponent was supposed to play Thalia. Yes, I will pay life for that. Okay, so I can Primeval Titan. By Primeval Titan, I lose Glacial Chasm, but can 100% just play an Emrakul afterwards. Or I can try to Thespian Stage. Uh, I lose either way to a Wasteland. I can Thespian Stage copy Glacial Chasm. Oh, this isn't legendary, is it? Hmm. 
So I could play Thespian stage, copy Glacial Chasm now, and then I 100% make it through another turn cycle. Or I can do, take the Primeval Titan line, attempt to dodge Flicker. Oh, I, I have to dodge Flicker Wisp and Recruiter and Wasteland. A lot. It's a lot, but I don't know how much better this game gets for me if I keep waiting. I think I'm going to just be dead to a Flicker Wisp at most times. Oh, I can Tabernacle. Tabernacle helps me a lot here. Oh, shit, I do have a Glimmer Post in there. Okay, so if I gain, grab gl Glimmer Post, gl let's grab Glimmer Post for 7 life and Tabernacle so that my opponent hates me. Alright, cool. And this buys me more time with this Glacial Chasm as well. I miscounted my um, Glimmer Posts earlier. Okay, and my opponent is just, like, paying for their creatures without giving it too much thought. That's pretty good for me. Okay, they've just got another land. Alright, good stuff. I'll pay for this. And then I'll pay for this. Yeah, that's not how you use your Rashadonport properly. So now you get all three of my cloud posts. Yep, do your thing. I don't mind. Uh-huh. Alright, there's Eye of Ugin. That is needled, unfortunately. Um, so I'll just Thespian Stage and copy Glacial Chasm in this turn cycle. Actually, I'll just wait. Yeah, I'll just wait. Um, note, my Primeval Titan cannot attack. Oh, I was going to have to pay for all of these. Okay, and everything's paid for. Alright, so now end of turn. Actually, can I just copy Cloud Posts? So if I, get, if I have one untapped cloud post, that's 4, 8, this would be a cloud post, that's 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, no, that's not quite enough. Um, it is enough if Primeval Titan attacks, though, because Glacial Chasm is gone. Yeah, there's not a cloud post in my graveyard. So I get a cloud post, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah. Okay. I copy a cloud post. Um, I did not count paying for this. I'm going to pay for it and hope I have an extra mana. I think I do. Uh, but I hope I didn't just punt that by not counting for Tabernacle. Okay. Okay. All right. So, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, I'm already just good. Yeah, I'm already just good. All right, there's Emrakul for an extra turn. All right, that costs two currently. All right, so I pay for both of my creatures. Always yield to this at this point. Yes. I go to combat. Send in for 15. Annihilate six. It right, looks like my opponent is going to let their lands go. That's fine. They go to five. I will now do this with an expedition map, I guess. Search with expedition map. Grab Caracas, play Caracas, bounce Emrakul, click on all of these things to recast an Emrakul, take an extra turn, and that kills my opponent. I have been <laughs> opponent to fought so hard. No kidding. Glad I recorded. GG's. Oh, what a game, folks. Okay, and there is the official concession screen. I uh, bantered uh, with my opponent for a minute, uh, letting them know when the video was going to be on YouTube and whatnot. Uh, hell of a round. Um, wow. All right, um, I'm on the draw for round two here. I have three lands. I don't know that this hand is actually good. Um, I think I'm going to ship this one. Eh. This five looks at a land so that I can start copying things with Vesuva. I think that's enough. I'm going to keep this. I like the first hand better than this one. Um, but I am going to just once upon a time now. I do not want to get this card dazed. It would be absolutely devious. Fuck, fuck me. Oh my god. Any green land, any locust would have been absolutely insane there. Um, all right. That's bad. That's bad.
I will uh, Vesuva a Bajuka Bog and not be able to Pithy Needle Wasteland initially. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Oddly, this might improve my hand. So now all these lands are going to enter untapped. That's super weird. I'm going to Pithing Needle, and uh, we're just going to Pithing Needle Karn. Like, I am not going to beat, like, a Liqui Metal Coating. I'm going to have trouble growing Elvish Reclaimer into a decent-sized creature, if I can even get it into play. Oh, I don't have a Wastes in this deck, do I? Uh, that's a problem. I guess that's Future Phil's problem. We'll just, uh, we'll just get a Primeval Titan into play. How about that? That's how I'll win. I'm down to 16. This is not a problem yet. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so they are on moons and suns. So this needs to be a forest. All right. Forest. Reclaimer. <clears throat> yeah, I'm a little unsure how I actually successfully grow this thing. I guess I have to just, like, manually grow it with its own ability. Yeah, okay, those... Yeah, as long as long as I get a second one, that's totally fine. I'm just confirming these enter tapped, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to take two in combat. Go to 14. This is fine. Ha <laughs> Got him. All right, so this is not a true Vesuva, if that makes sense. This is a fake Vesuva. Do this for one. Get another Elvish Reclaimer. The next turn, I can have two, three, fours. And I can also just, like, have more forests. Uh, I guess Fury is something that I have to worry about. Like, losing these Reclaimers would sort of suck. One mana? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. So... This means that my opponent is playing Dark Depths. So the idea is that they hide uh, some of their own lands. Or, okay, I explained that poorly. So the idea is that they exile some of their own stuff after they've played a Dark Depths that ends up with zero counters on it. Oh, crop rotation is hella good. I think I am going to start by casting a Once Upon a Time and trying to hit a land drop. That'll do. All right, so I'll play this, and now I leave up the ability to turn these into three fours, which I think I'm good with. Yeah. Okay. So they have to get rid of the Blood Sun too, and then they have a Merit Lodge. But if they get rid of, if they get rid of the Blood, if they get rid of Blood Sun, then I think they get their Merit Lodge. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn Tabernacle into another land. Cloud Post? Cloud Post is fine. So this is 2, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana. I am going to go ahead and crop rotation this as well into another one of these. Oh, shoot, I could have activated this as well. Still getting used to this. Okay. So this loses this ability. Right, X is 6. There's Primeval Titan. Yes. Primeval Titan will search up my own Dark Depths. And then a Caracas. I'll just kind of like be safe there. And I'm just going to crash on in at them. Maybe I should kill this Karn. Yeah, I hope I didn't just have like... Um, Amrakul mana available. I don't think I did. Anyway, no, I didn't anywhere close. Yeah, because I, I got the other cloud posts. All right. Play a land. Crash in at my opponent. We'll get two more of these. Um, grab an Eye of Ugin and a cloud post. Opponent goes to two. And I will tap three lands for an Emrakul. I also conveniently have extra turns, or infinite turns, rather. Yep, all right, GG's. Um, 
So this is going to be a Force of Vigor matchup for sure. Um, kind of the question here is what comes out. Pithing Needles are fine. They can Pithing Needle Karn and maybe Chandra Torch of Defiance. Uh, Rex Age needs to stay in. In Like, the Singleton Endurance is not bad. Um, maybe I should just pull up this deck list. I think I literally have it bookmarked. Yes, Red Merit Lodge deck is bookmarked. Okay, so I do want to Pithing Needle Karn the Great Creator. So there aren't Chandras, so I would always Pithing Needle Karn. Is Pithing Needling Karn better than just having access to Force of Vigor? Like, do I care enough about Karn that I Pithing Needle it? Because I can eventually just, like, cast an Olamog and get rid of an Ensnaring Bridge that way. That's a thing I can do. I don't know, I can also just, like, now the Pithing Needle should probably stay. How many aggressive creatures does my opponent have? That's a better question. Not many. There's two Terror of the Peaks. Those are five fours. All right. The Endurance can go. The Ramunap can probably go. The Bajukabog can probably go, and I'll trim one once upon a time. Um, This hand isn't anything special. I think I will just mulligan this. I have Selection for lands, but I don't actually have that many lands. Uh, I mean, I guess. I just keep this and throw back one Pithing Needle. Yeah, I'm not I'm not super hot on this hand. But I don't know how much better my life gets if I go to like five here. Alright. I will just play some Elvish Reclaimers. Like I have Karaka so that I'm safe from like just a quick Merit Lodge. I'm insulated against a Blood Moon effect. It's gonna be sort of a weird game in all likelihood though. Three mana is a Magus, sure. Alright. I think I'm just going to grab another Elvish Reclaimer this turn. Although I can just hold up my own Elvish Reclaimer and then produce my own Merit Lodge if they try to make a Merit Lodge. The timing for that gets super fucked up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just make another Elvish Reclaimer this turn. Um, but I think I could think about this turn for a very long time. Um, I'm just going to take an action, though. I think if my opponent makes a Merit Lodge, like, due to the fact that I have this Caracas, I'm just good as of right now. Okay. So, what do you have? Arn. I want to try that Pithing Needle. Uh, well, I guess I'll see what they grab, right? Bridge is a little bit of a problem for me. Um, actually, do they have Bridge? Because they're a Merit Lodge deck. Okay, they do. Okay, they're getting Liquid Metal Coating to try and blow up my lands. Okay, this is fine. I'm just going to go ahead and Pithing Needle Karn. And then I think I just hold up Cycling Lands with Elvish Reclaimer. Then my creatures will be bigger than Magus in like two turns. And then I can attack and kill the Karn. I assume this is the, yeah, this is the Liqui Metal Coating. That's fine. Okay, yep. Yeah, so my, my opponent's low on gas here and I... I'm high on gas. So this is this is going well for me. I'll just uh, continue converting these into forests. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, if I plan on just activating one of these again, I guess I should like not take all the forests out of my deck. I should grab some other random land here. I got dark depths. Uh, maybe I leave that one in there. Just do that. All right. Uh, once upon a time is not a bad draw. We'll just uh, we'll just pass the the turn back and forth a little bit. Okay, so that blood sun occurs. That means that it's going to be difficult to just like make a merit lodge because there's two different things in play stopping merit lodge from happening. So I'll just uh, I'll just continue grinding my lands out of play. I'm not gonna think too much about it here. Um. I'll just use this to cast a once upon a time. Grab, oh, I can just grab another Elvish Reclaimer. Yeah, I'll do that. So these are three fours. And both at Karn to guarantee that Karn dies. Karn does die, so Liquid Metal Coating doesn't do anything anymore. It's safe enough to do this. There's some super, super fringe lines where I can be punished for doing this, but it involves my opponent having, like, multiple of the, like, one mana exile one of the things. 
don't think that's super likely to happen. Okay. Sure. You can you can rush out and port me at this point. Alright. Play a land. I think I'm fine. Just taking this. Getting that Karn out of play. Then I'll Expedition map for a land drop. I'll make that land drop next turn. I'll play Primeval Titan. And then I expect my opponent is dead. Yep, absolutely. I'll take my two. I have like a forest with this. Don't think about it too much. Land. There's nine. When it goes to 11. Do the Primeval Titan thing. Yes. Um, at this point, I am going to grab a Dark Depths and then just another Forest. That way, if my opponent makes a Merit Lodge, I also get a Merit Lodge. I expect this is GG's. I've got the Ensnaring Bridge out via Karn cut off. And actually, my opponent doesn't have 7 mana anyway. Feels a lot like Modern right now, where like, a person boarded in Blood Moon to take, them, take me off of Tron. I'm absolutely not blocking that. Uh, and then, like, I just got to seven mana and hard cast a Karn anyway. That's that's what this game feels like, but the legacy version of it. Uh, yeah, so the reason I don't block the Magus of the Moon there is so that, like, I don't give my opponent a way to potentially just make a Merit Lodge. I don't need to mess around with that at all. Okay, yep. So opponent got rid of one of their things. Can make so many lands. All right, I've gotten the GGs in chat. Well, uh... Fetch up a couple of lands for style points. Nope. All right, we're done. Uh, we're two and zero. Okay. Um, I've kept my opening hand for round three here. Um, let's see. I need to hit more land drops. I could grab that Ramune Excavator and try to like play that on turn three. I don't know if I need the Ramune if I also have double Elvish Reclaimer. I think I'm just gonna grab another land here. Ooh, that is a Force of Will pitching a Hull Breacher. Uh, we could be playing against one of the, like, artifact blue piles, or we could be playing against the blue mid-range deck. We'll probably get that distinction immediately on turn one. Okay, yeah, so we are playing against an artifact blue deck. Um, that means my Pissing Needle has real value, and I probably don't want to name with it yet. So let's do the Glimmer Post thing. I'll redeploy an Elvish Reclaimer and play out Expedition Map. Now I do have four copies of uh, Force of Vigor in the sideboard of this deck, uh, which is pretty cool for this matchup. Um, so specifically, I think we are playing against the Echo Emery variant, um, since I saw that Hull Breacher. Okay, yep. Um, this is what I suspected I would end up pithing needling um, so before I do anything else, I think I want to just start here by playing the Pithing Needle and see if it resolves. It does. So we will turn off Emery. And then I think I'm going to end up grabbing Eye of Ugin off one of my Expedition maps. I think I'm just going to go ahead and play this and pass the turn. And I can decide if I want to map or Reclaimer a little bit later. A little awkward for me because if I get rid of this forest, I take. Uh, it's super awkward. Um, how am I winning this game? I'm not gonna be really fast enough to. You no, know, as long as I have. This is super awkward. I need. I need to like do rotating if I want to make this thing big enough to pressure the Karn, but then I lose out on expedition map value times two instead of just times one. I think that's fine. I think I just leave that expedition map there and treat it as something that might get turned back on later. I can also just like spike a pithing needle and then use that to shut off Karn. Um, LED. Oh no. Well, maybe oh no, actually. I would have been pretty okay with everything getting echoed there. I think that would have improved my hand as much as it did my opponent's. All right, so let's send one of these into a cloud post, and we'll see where I end up. Another expedition map. 
not not what I'm looking for. I will play them out because of like things like Echo. I want to be hellbent if uh, if I can at all do that. I have the larger creature, so if my opponent goes for just a Mycosynth Lattice lockout, I'm not technically just immediately dead to it. Okay. Oh, that's multiple echoes. Oh, actually, I might be dead to it, right? Because Mycosynth Lattice is going to stop me from activating this once it's turned into an artifact. Yeah. Yeah. I maybe I needed to get a fetch land previously. Yeah, because now I now I can't activate this. Yeah, so I needed I needed to get a fetch land to play around this better. Um, I am going to go ahead and just concede the game here. I'm not dead yet, but my opponent is going to kill me before I can like get to eight cards in hand to discard a land to grow that into a three or and attack that card down. All right. Um, get some force of vigors in here. What do I not want? Bojuka Bog has some utility. The Tabernacle has some stability. Words. Utility. Um, is this just a like? Junk some once upon a time sort of situation. Might be. I think I have to keep the glacial chasm because of like there's a saga construct potential or like psi potential. Don't know that I have to have the Ramu Nap. I think I'm gonna go down Ramu Nap and some number of once upon a times and call that good. I am fine with having an endurance in the deck to clear out the graveyard, but I don't think I want a bunch. Uh, Glacial Chasm is kind of a dead card here. I don't have green mana without using Expedition Map. Um, this would be a pitch card to here. Uh, I think I can do better than this mulliganing. Uh, 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 no. Oh my god. This is a super awkward hand. I'm gonna pitch a Tabernacle and one of these Pithing Needles. Just try to keep a hand that does Elvish Reclaimer stuff. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think this hand wins. Oh wow! Okay, opponent is very aggressive in countering Elvish Reclaimers. All right, uh, there's an Urza Saga. I mean, I, I have a Pithing Needle for that. Um, I guess I Pithing Needle it immediately in case my opponent actually does have Ancient Tomb. Um, but the Urza Saga kind of still gets the hmm. Copy it? I get my own Urza Saga. Now I don't want to Pithing Needle it anymore. Awkward. But, like, I can I can make some artifact construct tokens too. Okay, this is fine. I think I'm going to sandbag this for a little while. Alright, you make yours. I'll make mine, because you might end up Pithing Needling Urza Saga off your Urza Saga, if that's something that you have. Otherwise, my opponent could just get, like, an LED. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. I don't think you need to make that decision in your upkeep, though. I think you can wait until your draw step and then make that decision with one more card in hand. Okay, it is just a Mox Opal. Okay, that's bad for me. I guess I will be Pithing Needling the Urza. Uh, no, I can Pithing Needle all the things. I could also just Caracas Bounce that, though. Um, I can't super do that this turn though if I want this construct which I think I do so let's make it I think I need to stop there or is this saga now all right your Urza saga is off and I I am just gonna shut down Emery so I have an acceptable defensive front but my opponent is going to play more artifacts than I do so I don't know how long this all actually like works for so, like, next turn, my opponent's constructs are 4 fours off the Urza Saga, fishing out something else from their deck, even if they don't play any artifacts this turn, which is somewhat unlikely. All right, what are we looking at now? I mean, that that's the punish. That's the punish for me getting another construct instead of bouncing Emery. Ugh. An LED. LED turns those into 4 fours. And then my opponent's just going to sit back on him. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm just dead to Mycosynth Lattice again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just, I'm just dead to Mycosynth Lattice. 
and having a, another 1-1 one, one doesn't change that. Uh, actually, it does, doesn't it? Well, maybe it does more accurately. Um, I have to attack the Karn this turn and trade for these constructs now. All right, so I send these in at Karn. And it is my hope that my opponent trades both of their constructs for this. My life gets a little simpler if they block with an Emery in some ways, but they might end up just like ending. Okay, yeah, we're, we're just going to clear the board. That's fine. All right. So now I do a Green Sun or an Elvish Reclaimer. I think my opponent is in better shape than I am. Not going to respond to this by activating this Caracas. Okay, they're grabbing a Chrome Mox. Uh, Force of Will goes under it, sure. What is red mana? Or is this just a random color of mana? I think Aether Grid is four mana. Okay, uh, that's very bad. We'll bounce the Emery. Um, but I'm in a horrible position. I'm not getting Mycos and Lattice, but I'm just getting my lands destroyed instead. Um, I think I'm going to take one draw and concede the game. Because I'm getting, like, Rashad and Ported here. Like, my, my opponent has an active Planeswalker, a source of card advantage. I think I'm comfortable throwing in the towel unless this draw is just absolutely batshit insane. Yep. Uh, that, that's not it. Yeah, I make another Elvish Reclaimer. My Caracas gets blown up. I can't deal with Emery anymore. Yeah. I, I think this is a fine point to just uh, call it here. GG's. All right, um, round four opening hand is a little weird here. I can cast once upon a time and try to hit something that's relevant. Um, I, don't know, I have really three dead cards currently in hand. I think I'm just going to mulligan this one and try to find... Ah, fucking why? Uh, this is the same once upon a time hand I just had, but riskier. No. Like... What did I do to deserve this? Who did I piss off? I, I, I think I just need to keep card density here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just toss back some of my protection stuff and uh, try to find a green source with this. Uh, I mean, technically, this is what I asked for. That is a green source. It is not a green source in the way that I wanted it to be a green source, but... Uh, you know, they love me. All right, uh, we're facing down a noble hierarch. We're going to pretend to be elves for a minute and cast our elvish reclaimer. Uh, we could be playing against Infect here with a tropical island noble hierarch opener. <laughs> I feel betrayed. Just wait. I'll type you a response once you realize what's up. All right, so here's a brainstorm. Again, still could be in fact, or just could be some sort of like recolor blue mid-range pile. Um, we should find out one way or the other very, very, very quickly. Um, the sort of bad news here is I have no live cards. Okay. Yeah, okay, so we are playing against Stoneblade. Uh, all right, so I have trouble with Galdra. I guess I'm going to have to use Elvish Reclaimer to fix my mana. Uh, which means I'm not using it to answer Cauldra. I do not think I can win this game. I think I'm going to make my opponent sideboard for Elves by conceding here. I, I just don't think I can put permanence into play quickly enough to like do something about the Cauldra. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the value of my opponent uh, sideboarding wrong as being better than anything else that I could do. Okay. Is my opponent playing Wasteland? 40% chance, ballpark. My opponent will be playing something that I can Pithing Needle in that will be good. Like, in worst case scenarios, it, like, I just named Stoneforge. Like, I don't want this in my deck. I don't want this in my deck. I do want these in my deck. And then from there, maybe I go down on crop rotations. They're not, like... Crop rotation is not super great when your opponent has counter spells. Um, yeah, what if I just get rid of all of my crop rotations? Is that reasonable? I also don't really need Tabernacle. I, don't, I really don't need Tabernacle. I could just, like, 
straight up play a couple of endurances or force of vigors i don't think force of vigor is super great though because it doesn't kill cauldra cauldra is indestructible i don't know like endurance isn't super great versus stoneforge mystic either eh. all right i think in theory i like taking out crop rotation i don't know i could i could just keep these lands in here like these lands are still just things that i can get rid of with elvish reclaimer i'm just conceptually not super hyped about crop rotation in this matchup uh yes uh this is really fucking awkward all right it's resolved doesn't mean a ton all right we'll see if it just gets like prismatic endinged immediately does not savannah all right um this probably just means that i grab a critter this turn rather than um play out a second carpet of flowers before my opponent has played out any islands and trip time okay yeah it, it is cantrip time the swords and prismatic endings are good draws for my opponent all right that's a wasteland. Ah, uh, well, Hushbringer, huh? That makes my Primeval Titan significantly less good. This is also not a uh, an island. How does this card work? So when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice a land. So I, like that is obligatory. I can't just like play it and then immediately sacrifice it. Sure. Until I have a wastelandable land in play, I don't actually care about this wasteland. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do this and grab another Elvish Reclaimer. And we'll see what my opponent can do on their turn. Sure, sure, sure. Ah. That's what we're doing. Sure. Uh. Yeah, I think I'm just stone cold dead to this. Um. Like, I can keep bouncing it with Caracas. That doesn't really get me into a good position. All right. I, I guess I'll try to wiggle, though. I'm going to go ahead and play a new Carpet of Flowers. Wasteland themselves? Well, um, did not expect that line. Um, yeah, now I can't Expedition Map for Caracas immediately. That sucks. Alright, so I'll play a map. I'll play this on a Wasteland. Pass the turn. I can get my... Arrakis next turn and play it and get the Uro out of there. Um, yeah, this uh, this Carpet of Flowers thing is not doing it, doing what I want it to do. Like, I still have Glacial Chasm technically, so like I can still like stay alive. I'm just going to get brutalized by this shit. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go no to both of those. Activate this. Tabernacle is interesting. I think I have to get the Caracas for the short term, though. And then hopefully I can go and use Elvish Reclaimer to, like, find Tabernacle, potentially clear out most... Oh, shit, 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 shit. Okay, my opponent played around it anyway. They didn't take the Uro attack in, knowing that I could bounce it. They potentially... Good. I don't know, maybe they care about, care about the damage more than they do the cards. Sure. Yeah. And then I'll just uh, bounce this back to hand. Um, Alright. What am I doing with my life? Trying to make Merit Lodge now? Trying to make Merit Lodge might be how I win this. The land. Okay, that's a force of will. Attempt to kill this Teferi. I think working towards Merit Lodge is better. My opponent wastelanding their own land is killing me here. Just a little, little choked on mana. Can't get to my uh, 10, 10 mana big boy. That would uh, absolutely fuck up this game. Alright, so let's turn a forest into a Dark Depths. And then there's still this Teferi, right? My opponent will have a line where they... Oh no, they're at 26. Hmm. Maybe this doesn't do as much as I thought it did, actually. Yeah, 
Um, this is actually not great. Because I'm just going to be dead in three turns. My opponent's going to be able to survive a Merit Lodge hit. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Grab a forest. Pass my turn and see if I can somehow do something here. Like, my opponent also just has a bunch of cards in hand. Yeah, that's another chump blocker here. So now this, this Merit Lodge plan does not work anymore. Like, now this can even attack, or this could attack. I have multiple blockers. I can't even, like, get in a chunk of 20 here. Okay, uh, yeah, opponent just opting not to attack. I guess I'll copy a forest at this point to just give this a different name. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm fully just on the play Glacial Gasm and wait it out line now. Yuck. Sacrifice my Dark Depths. Note, I am dead to an opposing Wasteland, because my opponent can just Teferi bounce Pithing Needle. And good news, maybe there's a bunch of cards in my opponent's hands that are just land, and they're not actually working with that many resources. And bad news, I'm so far away from my cards that matter. Okay, so the Teferi is plussing. I think that's all my opponent's going to do. Yes. I have to pay two life here. And I'm not really playing towards outs. Alright, so I guess I play Pithing Needle. Pay the one for Esper Sentinel. That's uh, good enough to get a Force of Will. I can copy this thing in my upkeep. I'm going to go ahead and Bojuka Bog my opponent's lands out of there. Uh, damn it, Carpet of Flowers. I don't need very much from you. Like, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. One island brings me up to eight. Two islands brings me up to ten. All right. Do I get got by Wasteland? Not immediately. All right. I copy Glacial Chasm. All right. I will continue to say no to my lands. I only get one more turn of this uh, this bullshit bubble that I'm living in. And then if I want to keep doing stuff, I'll need to, like, green sun for a ramming up excavator to bring it back. Um, again, though, I am, I am dead to a wasteland at any point. All right, there's just another cantrip. That's fine. I wonder if opponent's deck is good. Like... Having these main deck Hushbringers means you're going to be a blue control deck that has better game against Doomsday than normal. You just shut off Thassa's Oracle from doing their thing. Alright. Ow. I mean... <laughs> I'm not dead yet. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. Alright. So I'll play this stage. I'll copy things again in my upkeep. Thanks, Carpet of Flowers. Real, real swell. I'm pretty sure I still lose my Thespian Stage Glacial, Glacial Chasm, even if I change the name that's on it. I think. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Alright, so... Do the copy. I guess let's find out. I think I still lose this. Yeah, I still do lose it, even if I change its name. Alright. Alright. Land, go. So next turn, I lose this card. Ugh, because of the fucking Hushbringers, I'm not... Or no. Yeah, Primeval Titan is not going to go and... Um, get me lands out of my deck. So despite the fact that I can cast Primeval Titan, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, which is a shame, because if it did trigger, I would be going places. Alright, so... Goodbye to this land. Alright, it's gone. It's, it's just absolutely insane to me that my opponent navigated this game on a single land. Giant. I will make my primeval titan. It resolved. I make sad noises and die in the air. GG's. Alright, um... Opening hand here is not anything special. I am lacking in initial green mana. I think that's okay. I can use Expedition Map to get that mana. Um, I think I'm just going to play Pithing Needle on turn one rather than play my hand in the most, most efficient way as possible. 
My opponent is mulliganing to five, though, so we might be playing against a fast combo deck. Um, in which case, my hand does nothing because I don't have access to something like Bojuka Bog immediately. I'm still going to Pithing Needle Wasteland. Like, had my opponent not mulliganed, I still think that would have been the correct play. If I hedge too much based on my opponent mulliganing to five and I read too much into that information and I'm wrong, I might lose myself uh, a game that otherwise could be very easy. Okay. Yeah. What are we dealing with? All right. So, I... Well, okay, there is my green mana. I have three dead cards. I don't quite have enough mana to do the things that I want to do, but generally speaking, I'm not too scared right now. A Blood Moon ends up being kind of a pretty big setback. Why, why do I say words? Why do I ever say words? Anytime I say words, they come true, and I just, I'm just hurt. Land Pass. I will need to find another basic forest in order to cast this Primeval Titan. Okay, um, that's a very swift clock. Uh, opponent's Mull to 5 is quite good. Um, this is good, though. So, get to do this for 3. Rex Sage. Rex Sage is interesting here. I think I'm going to go for that. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Blood Moon. This turns my tabernacle back on. This means that I'm not really taking that much damage from these goblins. And the goblin rabble master also just like can't attack. So I think this is fine. It's possible taking out the chalice and turning on like maps and crop rotations is better. Ooh. All right. The stomp makes my line a little rough. Like stomp plus city of traders in particular. Um, because I was hoping to just hold back, like, the increasing Goblin Rabble Master damage. This is two, three, four, five mana. Okay. I mean, I... If I rip a land, I have a Primeval Titan. Primeval Titan gains me a shit ton of life, and I probably stabilize and win. Um, but if I miss, I am just deterministically dead. So I got that going for me. This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage. I go to six. Um, this is okay. Um, oh, the Bone Crusher Dying gets to come in two. Uh, okay. I mean, I I missed my land drop. I am dead. GG's. Um, so I, I have Endurances and Force of Vigors that are reasonable cards to board in. I do not need Bojuka Bog. I probably need most of the rest of my stuff. I will probably not play Pithing Needle. Like, their Planeswalkers are cool and all, but I think I need to be more concerned with the other things that are in my opponent's deck uh, first. I don't think Ramming Up Excavator is necessary. I'm going to bring in other things that block just fine. And then I have to make one cut. That will probably just be a... Actually, let's cut a crop rotation and just hedge against Chalice just a little bit. Uh, I mean, sure. Not exactly a fantastic hand. It's a hand that will get better over time. The hand that makes a very large amount of colorless mana. The hand that's not really soft to Chalice on one. And that's a little soft to, like, Blood Moon plus Chalice. Okay. Yuri is under there. And opponent just has the Rabble Master on turn one. Um, I don't have green mana yet to generate a blocker to stop some of this. Um, I can get my green mana. I can play Glimmer Post this turn, have three mana, play and crack map. Is that better than just Vesuva ing Cloud Post? Probably not. Vesuva Cloud Post and play out two maps rather than using it to crack a map. So these Expedition maps mean that I can work towards Tabernacle or Glacial Chasm to kind of slow the damage that my opponent is doing. Um, I took Ramunap out of my deck, so I don't have just... Eh, that's super fucking bad for me. I mean, hopefully I draw a Force of Vigor. I think I kind of need that here, or I'm just going to die. I don't have... Oh, well, there we go. If it's not your turn. So, 
I go ahead and crack one of these. Grab a forest. Play a forest. I'll now go to my opponent's upkeep. And in my opponent's upkeep, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Blood Moon and the Chrome Mox. And then, with me playing Glimmer Post, I will have 3, 6, 7, 8 mana, which is enough to Green Sun or a Primeval Titan. And Primeval Titan can do some cool shit. Um, I'll have to do some math and figure out like what I can get with it realistically. Um, getting 8 damage here. Alright. Please don't moon me again. I thought I wanted to deny this mana. Oh, just fuck me. <laughs> Alright, I am very dead. Um, overall thoughts on the deck list. Not bad. Like, we ended 2-3, but as that first game in particular showed, this deck list has the ability to grind. Um, I will just kind of reiterate one of my points from the initial deck tech. Like, the mana's awkward. Like, there's hands where either you have green mana and you don't have, like, the cloud post sort of stuff, or you have the cloud post sort of stuff, and then you have a bunch of green cards in hand that you can't cast. Like, I definitely mulliganed a lot and i definitely tripped over my own cards from time to time just due to the difficulties of casting them um let's let's pull some lands around here so moving these over here um let's move all the colorless stuff i'm going to count like bojuka bog and caracas as colorless stuff so not counting vesuva or thespian stage as green sources there's only nine actual green sources in the deck. Cavern of Souls is really like really makes it closer to eight and a half because as we saw, this doesn't cast things like the crop rotation and the once upon a time in the green suns, right? So there's actually only eight mana sources in the deck that cast some of these cards. And the primeval titans and the endurances and the force of vigors, if you're hard casting them, are green green. Um, so this does make for some awkwardness. Um Without playing a ton of games with this deck list, I can't like say for sure whether or not this is worth it. But like this is a deck where you are going to, you're going to have to admit that you're okay with tripping over your own mana and dying to it sometimes. Um I personally am not the biggest fan of these green cloud post decks, but like the skill ceiling is very high here. If you really know what you're doing and like you've practiced a bunch, I I bet this like you can be successful with this deck list. But as someone like picking up this 75 for the first time, like I I think I played well. I did not play perfectly. Um, there's a lot of fringe things that you need to know to play towards. Um, so like this deck gets passing marks, but I don't think it is uh you know the next big thing to you know hit legacy or anything like that. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. If you made it to this point of the video, I hope you're subscribed already. Or uh, if you are subscribed already, uh, throw me a like. It's one of the easiest ways to support my content for free. Have a great rest of the day. I'll see you folks tomorrow.